In this tutorial we're going to look at how to create a macro in Microsoft Excel. Now before we get started we need to have the developer toolbar turned on which we don't have on our ribbon. So we'll go to the file menu and we'll go down to options. We'll then click on customize ribbon and you'll notice on the right there the developer which we need to put a tick in and click OK. This then gives us on our ribbon across the top a developer tab. And from here, once we have the developer tab, we also need to check our macro security option. So we'll click that on our ribbon. Ensure that it's not on the top option, disable all macros without notification or macros will not run. So we'll leave it on disable with the notification. That's fine. All right, we're now ready to start our macro. Now in this scenario we're going to type say the month January in a cell B1 and then we're going to drag and drop that and finally once we've dragged and dropped we will um, change the font colour and then we'll test by running the macro. We also have before we run a macro an option called use relative references. Now what relative means is wherever your cursor is if that's turned on when you're recording the macro it will run. So if I was in say cell G3 and I ran the macro that's where it will start. In this scenario today I don't want that I want it what's called absolute and where the cell I click in and the sheet I'm on is where I want sorry just the cell I'm in is where I want this to run. So relative is turned off we'll hit record macro and we'll give this macro a name and I'm going to call this macro months. Now under store macro in I can choose to save it in a blank workbook, in this workbook or what's called the personal macro workbook which would save it on this computer. Now for this scenario today I'll just save it in this workbook which means once I close this file it won't be available unless I have this file open or this workbook open. Alright so the macro is now recording and we can tell by looking up here and we see it's got stop recording. So I'll type into cell B1 the word Jan and I'll click enter. I'll then click on the cell B1, get my drag and drop and I'll pull that across the 12 columns to column M and let go. You'll notice there that I have dragged and dropped. Once I've done that I'll then change the font colour. So I'll go to the home tab on my ribbon and I'll give it the font colour red. There's a simple macro that I've recorded. I now need to stop it back to developer, stop recording. So all I did is I turned on the recorder, I did my steps and then I stopped the recorder. Now to test my macro I'll click on say sheet 2 and I'll go to macros and you can see here there's a macro called months and hit run and there you go it's just done that. Now be aware if I delete that cell click off it, macros, months, run, it does it again. Okay so there's running the macro. Finally if we were using it on different workbooks we would have saved the macro in the personal. We would have need to save it here under record in personal and that way we can use it in multiple spreadsheets. Now I'll just cancel here and show you how I put a macro on my quick access toolbar. What I do is I come up to the top here to this quick access toolbar and I go down to more commands. From here I choose popular commands macros. So I change it to macros. There's the macro called months and I'll add it over to the right here. If I wanted again I could change by hitting modify, make it a little smiley face and click OK. Now I'll just go to a blank sheet. We can see there's no data here. There's my smiley face. I'll click that and it does that macro. When you're saving in uh, Excel 2007 and 2010 you must remember when you go save as that not to save the file as an Excel workbook but as what's called a macro enabled workbook. That way it saves that macro code in the file and it's available elsewhere. So I'll just call the file there months for example as a macro enabled and you can tell that if you looked at the file extension it would be called not xlsx but xlsm as the file type when you save. 